Welcome to the observatory. This is episode four. It is now July 13th, 2014. And in this episode, I want to talk about holy basil. Uh, I want to talk about um, a rebounder that I just got, which is like a mini trampoline. Uh, the Baba I'm going to talk about is Baba Ramdev. Uh, K-drama, Korean drama, online drama, um, EVO, which is an, um, a fighting game cha championship that's uh, currently being held in Las Vegas right now, uh, this idea of Gaia craft, which is working with the earth, uh, the teachings of ayahuasca, and um, holy basil, if I haven't mentioned that already. So yeah, those are the topics for this week. Okay, uh, first topic I'm going to bring up is this rebounder that just came from Amazon. Uh, rebounder is like a little trampoline and it's awesome. It uh, works well inside and I can bounce on it and the um, reason I like it is because it's a lot of fun and it's a non-impact exercise it's jumping but it's not jumping on a hard surface the surface gives way um, the rebounder allows the body to be in a zero gravity environment for the uh, second that you're in the air and then it doubles the gravity when you land on the rebounder. So both of these are good for um, the cells of the body being able to eliminate toxins. So uh, the lymphatic system uh, helps the body um, get rid of cellular waste and for the lymphatic system to be working properly it needs to be stimulated by movement. So the rebounder is a great way to um, help clear the body of cellular waste. So one of my favorite things to do is listen to music and um, jump on the rebounder and while high it's one of the best things ever and um, they're not very expensive. I definitely recommend getting one for your health. Okay, I usually like to bring up a Baba um, on these weekly video podcasts and the one I'm going to talk about this week is a Baba named Baba Ramdev. He's in India. I'm not exactly sure what uh, state or province or area of India that he's in. Uh, the point uh, that um, the thing that, uh, the point of value that, um, that I received from this Baba was a particular breathing exercise. Um, it's good for the skin actually, it's a pranayama. Pranayama is a branch of yoga and certain pranayamas are used to cure certain, um, diseases or ailments or health conditions and I had a skin issue on my um, shin, um, it was kind of like a cut that wouldn't heal, but it was like a skin problem. And um, according to the uh, Ayurvedic um, system, which is a ancient Indian um, medis medical or ancient Indian uh, traditional medicine, uh, they recommended trying this. Um, uh, are doing this certain breathing exercise and for me it worked it did clear up the skin problem and I haven't had an issue with that and um, it does take work pranayama is considered uh, breath work so I had to put in a good amount of time every day into uh, focusing on this breath work and 
The exercise he's well known for is the one also that he recommends for um, the health uh, issue that I had. And it is called, uh, the name of the breath um, pranayama exercise is called Kapalabhati. And it's basically just uh, forceful exhales through the nostrils and it presses in the stomach while you exhale and it just constant exhales like and it works on um, I think it works on the digestive system which is um, actually one of the uh, main um, areas uh, uh, of issue when uh, a skin condition is present um, so I think it helped to strengthen uh, my digestive system and it helped uh, my skin as well. Uh, if you're interested in trying this, it has health benefits even if you're already healthy. Um, you can work on these breathwork exercises and it will um, help your general health condition and quality of life in my opinion. Uh, so if you're interested, you can visit uh, Baba Ram Dev's a website and he has a lot of interesting pranayama videos in which he explains more. Okay, in this segment I want to talk about a Korean online drama that I really enjoyed uh, it seems like in the past couple years, I will find a online Korean drama at the beginning of the year, usually in the winter time, that I'll watch. Um, a new episode will come out every week. Um, this past year, I watched this um, the show called Let's Eat, and it dealt with themes of modern life in Seoul. I think, I'm pretty sure it was Seoul, and the stress of working, <laughs> um, work stress, modern life, uh, just general issues, um, it's a comedy, and the focus was on eating, so I know that there's a big thing going on with um, sort of like uh, people love to watch people eat meals, and that's a big thing. In Korea and this show kind of picks up on that whole um, phenomena and there's a focus on meals usually uh, the main character works in a law firm so they go out to eat for lunch and um, there'll be these sl almost like a slow motion montages or something of, of um, them enjoying their meals and this is one of the first shows I've ever seen where they focus on food in this way. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, I just, you know, it was just fun to watch. I enjoyed watching the um, the meals and stuff. Uh, what else can I say? Um, yeah, check it out. Let's eat. If you are interested in Korean dramas, I give it a thumbs up and I had a lot of fun with that one. Okay, I want to talk about in this segment a guiding idea for me, um, which is the idea called Gaia Craft. Uh, I think a lot of people have heard of this concept of Gaia, which is the Earth as a living organism. Um, the term Gaia Craft refers to uh, working with the Earth, and it's something I learned from Delvin Sulkinson who is a permaculture um, expert in um, British Columbia, I believe. And I really like this concept of Gaia Craft because it has to do with working with the earth and being creative with growing plants, composting, all of these permaculture aspects, but in a very futuristic and um, modern um, design sense. So rather than uh, being sort of like an old farmer, they take a lot of these really amazing 
um, futuristic design elements and um, apply them to um, gardening and permaculture and um, sort of creative uh, working with the earth. So this is an idea that has been really um, uh, big for me in terms of the direction uh, that I would like to go in and that I would like to see the earth go in because I don't see a lot of options um, for people who want to work with plants besides uh, the sort of the culture that is sort of um, you know historically representative as the sort of the farmer culture but it kind of takes like a, the urban culture um, a lot of like electronic music culture, a lot of this futuristic urban um, technological even uh, kind of culture and it merges it with the concept of um, skillfully working with the earth. So it's called Gaia Craft. So it's the craft of working with Gaia. But to me, the culture of it is, um, like I've mentioned, um, sort of futuristic. So it's it's a new, in, in my, the way I see it is it's a, a sort of a new kind of culture uh, that um, that melds sort of the, the ideas of visionary art, um, electronic culture, urban culture, and, and like I said, merges it with permaculture and, um, and like I mentioned, the skills of working with composting, creating earth, creating gardens, creating um, food forests, creating edible gardens, creating um, food independence, plant knowledge, um, knowledge of ecosystems, uh, knowledge of the um, uh, the way the earth changes and being able to observe ecosystems and um, all these things that are aspects of permaculture. Uh, I just love the way those two elements combine and um, I love this idea and it's one I've been working with uh, ever since it's sort of uh, been revealed to me. To me it's a pretty big idea. Um, I guess I heard about it around 2007 or something and it's been at the forefront of a lot of what I've been, um, that a lot of the things I've been thinking about, it's been at the forefront of that and it's one of the um, main ideas that keeps me optimistic about um, projects that I would want to work on and that I want to communicate. So I'll put a link to Gaia Craft and um, I think that's all I'm going to say about it for now, and I hope I was able to uh, communicate the message. Okay, happening right now is one of the world's, probably the world's largest fighting game uh, championship. Uh, it's called Evolution. Um, it's called Evo for short, and it happens every year in Las Vegas. And I had stopped playing. I used to play video games when I was younger, and I stopped for a long time uh, when I went to school and was in college and after college. Um, just didn't really want to put time into video games. And around 2008, uh, Street Fighter 4 came out and I was a big Street Fighter 2 fan so I felt like I should check it out and I started getting into that game and I decided um, I wanted to play it but just that game and I've gotten really into Street Fighter uh, playing online I can play against people all around the world and um, the thing I like about it is uh, it works on reflexes, competition, um, almost, uh, you know, kind of psychic, being able to pre, you know, pre-decide what the other opponent's going to do, and if you guess correctly, then you'll do well. Um, so it's 
it's cool in a lot of ways that you get a lot of adrenaline from playing it. Um, so, you know, part of uh, what I've seen in terms of spiritual development is the um, ability to go into medita meditative states, but also the ability to control the, those brain waves in the opposite direction when the Buddhists would have like um, debates. Uh, and so they get the mind waves going into that dualism. And so it's about being able to um, bring yourself into meditative states, but also into those um, states of uh, debate and dualism as well. But to do those, get in and out of those states consciously. Um, so there's sort of like the peak and the valleys of the mountains and being able to navigate the brainwave experience of being a human consciously. So I take the, uh, playing Street Fighter as that kind of um, going into the uh, dual mindset framework consciously and um, it's a lot of fun. I think it's a great game. I love the online adventures of Gutex and Mike Ross. I watch those a lot. Um, if you're interested in the game, definitely check out those episodes. Uh, what else could I say? I've already seen a lot of what's happened at EVO. The grand finals are going to be later on, um, on Sunday, which is actually today. Um, it's been a really revolutionary EVO. A lot of the uh, usual top eights. Uh, are not in the top eight. Uh, I think there's a, there might be like, um, there's a lot of people at, at EVO. Uh, I, I wish I had the number, but it's a huge deal. It's been going on for at least 10 years now. Um, and it gets bigger every year. And it's all about the, the fighting game community. Um, I, I loved going to arcades and there aren't really arcades anymore. There's still arcades in Japan, and a lot of the best players um, come from Japan, but there are a lot of fighting game communities um, which people come together for their love of fighting games. And they, there's just a lot of interest, interesting aspects to EVO, the um, the whole history of Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2, and now Street Fighter 4 and all its progressions. So I'm big into EVO right now, and I'm hoping Sako or Momochi will win it. Uh, Momochi's Ken is great. I hope he. I play Ken, so it's great to watch him play. Um, and uh, I think Sako's an, a great player and a really cool guy, so I hope he could win. So either one of those two, but I'll be eagerly awaiting the outcome, uh, which I'll find out tomorrow, see what happens. Um, so yeah, that's Evo. The teachings of ayahuasca, um, there are a lot of teachings from ayahuasca, it could be uh, possibly endless. I'll bring up one, uh, which I think is a good one to start with, and that's the importance of names. Uh, everyone has a name. Um, it said if um, if your name is meaningless, then your life will be meaningless. And um, the um, meaningful name is a name that is a description. That's why if you see. Um, uh, if you remember a lot of the Native American names, like Sitting Bull, um, they would be descriptions. Um, a descriptive name would be a name like Skywalker. In uh, The Power of Myth, uh, The Hero's Journey, the hero has a name, uh, which is actually um, in Star Wars, Luke Skywalker. Uh, Luke means light. But Skywalker is like a Native American name, which obviously means one who walks on the sky. Um, a lot of the Western names are names that 
uh, don't have a clear meaning. Um, they aren't directly descriptive in the in the way um, we use descriptions. They're old names which might have been descriptions uh, a long time ago. Um, like my name is Stephen, and if somebody said, "What is a Stephen?" Um, you wouldn't. You don't describe anything as Stephening. Uh, so, at one point, the Greek uh, term it goes back to the Greek term Stephanos, which was a uh, garland crown. So, um, it's a Greek word. We don't speak in Greek. Um, so that's why it's important. Um, to have a name which means something. Uh, you could give yourself a descriptive name. Um, I think in, you know, if a lot of, say, you could use the example of like a hip-hop name like the RZA, um, which is short for Razor, because he's razor sharp. Um, that's an example of a modern day name, uh, which would be a nickname or a stage name or something like that, but it's a name that means something. And um, it's definitely preferable to have a name which means something rather than a name which is sort of vague, uh, like a lot of Western names. So think about your name, uh, think about if you could name yourself. Um, if you have the power to name yourself, to give yourself a descriptive name, or if other people refer to you in a descriptive sense. Uh, because life, one way of looking at life is that it's a story, and we each play a part in the story, and our part will be much more meaningful if our names are meaningful. And if you look at the difference between the Native American cultures and the modern Western cultures, uh, one of the first things you'll notice is the difference between the names. So, yeah, that kind of wraps up this concept of um, one of the primary teachings that I received from ayahuasca w um, dealing uh, with the power of names. Um, at one point I had the idea that a name for myself would be filter, digester, radiator. Um, because I filter information, digest it, and then radiate it in a new way. Um, these are all descriptions. It's a three name name. And um, it usually makes sense to have a first name and a last name because a lot of, in ancient history, um, the names would refer to places. There might be someone named John from a certain town, so they'd be named um, Jean de la wherever. Um, but the third name is very interesting because it's kind of hidden, uh, the middle name. Um, so to have three names all meaning something, all describing something of your character. Um, one other thing I'll say about um, descriptive names is that um, uh, most people, if you, if you give them a descriptive name, will eventually live out the description of their name. And going back to Wu-Tang, again, um, you can see this with Old Dirty Bastard, uh, he was given that name, a uh, stage name for, um, uh, for you know, for being in the group and everything, and outside of the group, but um, he was the only one so far to die prematurely, and he probably had the wildest name, and he probably had the wildest life, even though I'm sure all of them had pretty wild lives, but then you compare it to the Jizza, the genius, and he is now giving lectures at um, Ivy League schools and um, making, doing projects with top level astrophysicists and things like that. Um, so just an example of uh, 
how descriptive names uh, can shape people and the power of names. Um, so, yeah, the advice is if you have a name that you feel like is not a description, it's just sort of an empty uh, name that might have meant something a long time ago, then um, that's one of the first things that you should change. Or I'm not saying you should change it, but uh, the idea is that um, you could change it and it could have an effect. They say your name um, plays into your fate. So I think I've talked about names and um, and things like that enough. Uh, it's something I'll bring up uh, from time to time when I'm talking with people. Um, but it is a little esoteric. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, then that's great. Um, but I hope I don't come across as too crazy. So I got a gift of holy basil a few weeks ago and I planted it in this little hugo culture garden bed that I built um, and it's grown a lot and I've been eating a few of the leaves and today I made some tea out of it and I basically took some nice green tea and I um, took a few sprigs of the holy basil which had the flower tops and a lot of leaves and um, put that in a cup with the tea and it tasted exquisite uh, holy basil's medicinal properties are um, anti-stress, um, anti-negative energy. Uh, it's a common um, Ayurvedic herb. Uh, so it's growing well here in the south. Um, if you have any interest in holy basil and growing it, I would uh, definitely recommend it. Um, yeah, that's all. Holy basil.